One of the most anticipated reviews is here. Now they are finally for you. The Volkswagen ID3, their new electric vehicle, which is supposed to really attack the EV market. Here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas, we're going to find out all about exterior, interior, and the driving experience. And is this really the answer from the German automotive industry to the Tesla Model 3? We'll find out. Jonas brings the magic behind the camera in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go. ID3, where does that name come from? Well, 3 it stands for the compact segment, but also for Beetle Golf ID3, supposed to be the third major Volkswagen in their history. Well, let's see how that one turns out. Today is the first step in driving it. In the front, we can see it's a very friendly and round face, more reminds a little bit of the Beetle, definitely. The headlamps here with the interesting daytime running light and also more visualizations to come. It comes standard with LED main headlamp unit, optional the matrix LED as we see it also here. Then this dot structure here stamped in the color in the lower part. This color here today is called Marquena Turquoise, comes from a beach in Maui, Hawaii. So yeah, a very striking color, friendly and also unique. VW logo here in white with a retro design and in the lower part horizontal elements, a very short hood. This is due to this new electric platform, the MEB, the Module Electric Building Platform, which then also guarantees all of the advantages of an electric vehicle and will be sold in millions actual, actually. So many, many vehicles will be based on this platform. VW, Skoda, Seat, Audi and so on. And also Ford, for example, they are selling this to Ford as well. This will be very interesting. And when you have all the options ticked for lighting and for keyless entry, then you can see this light show. Just when approaching this vehicle, you can see that also like a blinking eye looks left and right, the illumination in the front. So yeah, pretty nice. And just with having your key in the pocket, like this here, there's also a puddle light. And then later on, when the car is closing again, you can have the same thing all over again, just reverse and you can also look in the mirror there and the tail lamps actually also have this show. 4 meters 26, 14 foot or 168 inches is the length of the ID3. So approximately the length of a Golf, but the wheelbase is way longer and you can see there's hardly any overhang. For example, together with the rear wheel drive concept, in the front, you can turn the wheels in quite, you know, heavily from the angle. Plus the small overhang, this ensures a very small turning circle of 10.2 meters, a turning circle more like a VW up. So pretty cool as for that. The rear engine concept also has more advantages. I'm going to talk about that one later. Other than that, you can see once again this wide wheelbase that ensures more room on the interior. It comes with a standard suspension and later on there will also be the DCC available, the adaptive suspension as we know it also from their other combustion engine vehicles. The design here, the line, the dropping line on the height of the door handle, that's actually quite cool. Then a chrome line in the top part 
and then a massive C pillar as we know for example from the Volkswagen Golf. However, this contrasting here, this is just just you know like a like a wrap layer. Um yeah, so I can also actually live without it. Wheels come from 18 to 20 inch and these are the biggest one, 20 inch. They reduce the comfort of course a little bit while driving. So the most comfortable setup will be later in the DCC option and then also together with smaller wheels. In the rear we can see a black panel design. You can see here then a contrasting color once more. Pretty interesting, especially nice with the white retro logo once again. Well, and then you have the massive wing here and this also has an important aerodynamic function. By the way, acceleration figure for the fastest electric motor, we also have it here today, 204 horsepower, 7.3 seconds. There will be different horsepower specs available, also going to talk about that very soon. And then they're also, of course, a little bit slower. But important thing about the electric motor is they have instant torque, so it's not a classic power curve as we know from the internal combustion engine. This is of course another advantage of the electric vehicle. From design, it's of course not like a super beautiful sedan. It can split opinion, definitely, yes. But one thing is for sure, they found a very unique design for their new electric vehicle. Charging, 11 kilowatt AC or 50 kilowatt DC optional 100 kilowatt DC and later even up to 120. Well guys and the frequently asked question is when I put this one not only to the normal drive mode but to the B mode the extra recuperation mode and then lift the throttle does that then activate the braking light? Let's find out. So you've seen it, yes it does, and actually this is even ruled by law at a certain momentum of deceleration that then the braking light has to be activated. So not at every recuperation, but as soon as it is harsh enough. And this is the battery here in a cutaway model. Volkswagen assembles it themselves, however the cells on the inside, they are supplied by LG. There are three different sizes for the batteries. Starts with the so-called pure version, 48 kilowatt hours. Then there's the pro version, this is 62 kilowatt hours. And the pro S is 82 kilowatt hours. Gross values, the net values are three to five kilowatt hours less each. Three battery sizes means three different range figures, 330, 420 or 550 kilometers official. And the miles range is 200, 260 or 350 miles and for the biggest battery. Well, and in this cutaway model we can see a rear engine concept. Why did they do that? First of all, better weight distribution. They have the battery centered in the center of the vehicle, low center of gravity, sporty driving, and then for an optimum 50-50 weight distribution they put the electric motor then in the rear. Also, the rear engine concept is better for the traction on the ground, so just when you accelerate the weight is always leaning to the back so you can also ensure a good grip good traction actually for example also in winter times it's not as it you know used to be in in, in past times where you have uh, the combustion engines which sit in the front and maybe not so much weight on the rear axle here it really works so the rear engine concept makes more sense for this electric vehicle and this is the colorway model of the electric motor volkswagen does build it themselves and depending on the battery size the smallest one either gets 126 or 150 horsepower the mid and the mid battery pack actually gets 150 or 204 horsepower and the top battery only 204 horsepower so these are different horsepower specs you could not combine the smallest battery with the biggest horsepower figure that would not be possible but in general it's the same electric motor with just a different software tune so theoretically you could tune it afterwards but they told me they really have some you know good protection for that that it shouldn't be possible and you know theoretically they could offer it just in the software menu but then the problem is the regulations you know you would need to re-register the car overall yeah but maybe at some point this will be still possible not all colors on location today but we have some more for you for example this is here the metallic gray
or what about the white one? My personal favorite because it works so well together with all the black contrasts. And by the way, here also 19 inch wheels mounted. And I think these 19 inch wheels are way more beautiful than the other 20 inch wheels we have on our main vehicle for today. Oh, this one here, hmm, this is a lighter gray. So it looks like this Nado gray from Audi, for example. Might be that's just the same paint. Also an interesting styling combination, isn't it? This is the car key, we know it already from the Volkswagen Golf. This one here gets the same keyless entry, put your hand on the outside to close it. And also the mirror folds in and on the inside and folds out. There we go. <laughs> then the door closing sound. Ah, very solid. That's actually, you know, what you can appreciate about the Volkswagen build quality. But what you can't is this hard pick at the instant of the doors and okay if the entry version is less than 30,000 euros for this car maybe okay but the car as it stands right now rather close to 50,000 euros than with the biggest battery then I think not okay interesting also here the high gloss black mm, not okay with that either and only two levers for the windows front but then but you have to know that a capacitive button for the rear and then you control the rear windows with these two. Hmm. Yeah, two more buttons safe there. Yeah. And also here, this is known from the old system to control the left and right mirror. It also gives you some kind of haptical feedback. But here, this is the middle, then right. Middle, left, middle, right. But look at that. Only like before it gives you the haptical feedback. Here, just a little bit between reverse and heated mirrors so and you really have to look at this while controlling it so I'm I don't know either a completely new system or just keep the old one but this one is I mean not intuitive at all okay we're going into details here but this is auto fuel then this cockpit of the ID3 steering wheel either a base steering wheel with um, you know with a PU material that is animal free as soon as you pick the travel assist, so the elaborated assistance system, then you get this steering wheel with the animal skin wrap, and it's also capacitive that it actually realizes just when you grab it. They are at the moment developing an animal-free alternative also for the high trim version when you pick the travel assist, so this is also coming up. The instruments, digital, all come like this. They're connected to the steering wheel column, soon more to that. Soft touch is here at this gray dashboard, available in gray, black, or also in a more expressive orange. Then the seats, they start as base with a yeah, darker fabric. This is the you know, more elaborated version, which has a mix of materials, fabric, then here's some microfiber, and also leatherette. And they went all animal-free for the seats, because that's, of course, more friendly to animals. You do not support an industry that is ruining the environment. And also better for their CO2 value, because this car is CO2 neutral. This is the base seat, so to say, but just with elaborated fabrics. But then there will be a different seat form, a sports seat with integrated head restraint, later available then with a special sports package. Very interesting. Now let's take a look inside when I get inside and it's a very easy entry and you have a lot of room around you that's pretty cool so, uh, so open spacious feeling seat lowest position and with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 there's still enough headroom left no problem there is this optional panoramic roof also in built in this vehicle 
and there is a shade you can also activate it for example with the voice control or like this here with the slider in the top part and it's a fixed glass roof but here then you can just use the shade and oh the sound system is being activated automatically I have my phone at the moment where Bluetooth connected and it's a very good sound system especially when you play above and beyond wow it's a very nice sound here for a compact vehicle so very happy with the sound already just not happy with how you control the volume because either here with sliders at the steering wheel or you can also press it and get some kind of haptical feedback like this or then again with another slider in the middle of the display here and this is again to me another showcase of let's do something new but not because it's better because just because it's new you know there is discussion also internally at Volkswagen about these sliders I'm not sure if they are meant to stay here forever at the moment it's like this I'm not a fan of it are you interior overview this is here soft touch this is hard pack also in the lower part so I think they need to fix this then there's this 10 inch screen as one single unit soon more deals to the screen one more deal already here the temperature sliders like this volume sliders like this mm, yeah using it while driving not the biggest fan of you can also use it voice control soon testing that and some hotkeys here for driving mode when you have the dynamic chassis control the adaptive suspension this will more play a role definitely later on available option assistance systems you can activate here then again the climate hotkey and then a parking hotkey where we can also see this rear view camera with a nice resolution again soon more to the whole software right side then you have the driving mode selector right here parking mode with clicking on the side then you push it forward for the d mode one more for the b mode more recuperation neutral would be like this and all the way towards you is for reverse I'm not sure for me it would be more like if this would be reverse and this would be driving but is it a matter of preference or what's your take on that then there's this very small screen here inside the steering wheel it's connected with this column up and down and in and out and they do not have a full map digital, uh, digitalization here it's just that you see these arrows and then you can switch the view if you for example want to have them a little bit bigger there these arrows or the digital speech just in the middle or the assistance systems helping info so a little bit limited of what it can actually do i mean it's quite nice to read it why not and they say if you have a head-up display you don't need much more information here personally i got used to virtual instruments that also display a big map here hmm. or oh, what's your take then once again the steering wheel it looks quite cool and fresh but then these capacitive buttons which just have this one pressing field overall um, yeah that's what with the view here um, but here to control it is not that intuitive um, and it's hard to finely tune things um, here up and down by the way and okay you can control you know certain menus with that but not everyone and then on the left side you have the adaptive cruise control which is again a little bit complicated to use um, plus and minus would be 10 kilometer steps but then again, when you press the one on the inside here, you control with plus and minus the distance. But sometimes you slip with your finger and then you want to increase the speed and just end up re um, increasing or reducing the distance. Set rest does not give you plus or minus one kilometer, like in the Golf or in the Leon. And then on the, here on the lower part, you switch the mode, adaptive cruise control and the speed limiter. Hmm. So to be honest, this is among the weakest parts of this car using it while driving drives you mad at least me in the middle console we have this net here then there are cup holders also adaptive then we can have the split here hmm but i don't know it's a little bit strange um this rubber pad this also to put your phone in then a huge storage area right there two usb c chargers and you can also have a split here depending on how you like that then the infotainment system up close you have menus here like sliding this way this adjustable home menu and then there's the normal home menu which doesn't look that modern i think what's your take this is also home button here you can always return to that here you can also access the climate unit or in the lower part so there's some kind of hotkey 
then you can also increase the temperature here or once again with the temperature sliders seat heating is here and you have either the smart climate where you can say like cool my feet or the classic climate where you can switch you know where it's coming from you can also try the voice control hey id increase temperature increase temperature no problem there it is so this would be you know, one use case of the um, of the voice activation. At the moment, I have my phone connected with Bluetooth. Nice sound. We already showed that to you. And Apple CarPlay and Auto will also be standard on this vehicle, but just not in this pre-production stage vehicle we have here, right? You you know for for you today. And the vehicle data here, this can get lower. This is including accelerations. They calculated by the most recent 600 kilometers this car has run and when we drove it without acceleration you rather get to figures like you know 14 kilowatt hours on a kilometer something that's actually quite okay then here vehicle you can also change the things you know like this exit lighting uh, how long this is supposed to take so this is actually quite nicely done where i can also trim the head-up display to be for example higher or lower or the brightness and so on and here at charging you can also see then the amount of the battery so what is actually still left hey in the pedals joyful here for pause and play <laughs> yeah why not it was also quite fancy you might remember van style vehicles like the Charan, for example and here you have these separated armrests for the individual seats and you can also adjust them in height a little bit so um, like this for example or then a little bit lower so this is actually a quite nice idea why not and yeah quite comfortable as well and do you see the small light strip there in the front shall remind us uh, you know of kit from Knight Rider so the car seems to be alive a little bit also when you use the voice command hey ID And then you can see here on the left side again the different visualization and when you use the gps by the way and turn somewhere then you see a blue stripe going from one side to the other side to visualize the turning process as well and in the optional head-up display you can see your current speed and also some assistance system information and gps information and also there are these special arrows this is part of the augmented reality function you can see here even on camera these are two different um, layer so to say from the distance and in a distance of three to ten meters like a felt distance you will see these arrows as they are on the road and then they show you where you need to turn actually and we also have a demonstration here for you because here you can see it better as it would be in the car again the arrows that are being projected on the road and then you really know where exactly you need to turn now getting to the rear compartment and this is interesting first of all the same nice bright fabric styling at the interior this leatherette insert this then here again hard pack and the shiny black hmm yeah okay about that but the seats are actually pretty cool again in design this rather Scandinavian inspired furniture design and you can see there's no middle tunnel of course because there needs you know there's no mechanical link between front or rear axle this is not an all-wheel drive car but even if it would have two motors there's no need for a middle tunnel or you can put it for stability reasons but they didn't here actually and two usb-c devices and the seat bench you can see it stands a little bit in an angle and there has been discussion about this so some say it actually reduces the pressure then um, while seating on your lower back but i don't like sitting you know like like in this angle me personally i am more comfortable in the more upright seating position like at a dinner table or something but What's your take on that? They did it, however, that you have a little more headroom, you know, and with one meter 86 or six with one, it still fits here also with the headroom in the rear, exactly fits. Panoramic roof, good view to the ceiling, then to the stars. There's also this voice command where you say, like, uh, show me the stars, and then it opens. But however, we tried it and it didn't work. But at this point, the online services are not available for the voice command system in this, you know, early stage vehicle. That might have been a reason for that. I don't know. Then, legroom here. This is also more than, for example, in the Volkswagen Golf. So this is, you know, how they can use the space a little bit better from this electric building platform. It's not a long car on the exterior. 
but the space you have on the interior is actually quite good. Then you have isofix at the outside of the seats each. And there's the middle armrest right here. Everything solid, not a debit fee, however. And then you can have the ski hatch right there. Or you already flip the seats from here in a one-third, two-thirds split. Well, at the rear you can fold this logo. This is quite cool. You know, this white retro logo. Here we go. Manual hatch. And there we are. It's not too high here, but still square dimensions. You have this additional cover and you can store for example your cable underneath there so this is quite good this also reduces the loading silhouette i've already flipped one of the seats you can of course do the same with the other side and when i put a cabby trolling on the inside that you can see with the sample luggage right here like this does it also fit in the vertical way let's see yeah that works and then let's also put the other bench aside and we can also give you some measurements so i need to put the front seat jonas has been sitting in the co-driver seat so i need to put it a little bit into the front there we are so now with the measurements the normal trunk length to the normal seating area this is here yeah almost 80 centimeters then the width here about a meter the height here to the cover about 40 centimeters pretty much standard and then the length for the longest things here to the seat is we would be driving. We go with one meters fifty-five. By the way, did you notice these here? So maybe it's another grab handle if you don't want to use the internal grab handles. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's unique. Um, is it a cool? Is it a styling feature, or is it? Hmm. I don't know. It's unique. Hmm. And here also a different interior styling, different color codes. So a lot of white, bright materials. Pretty cool and also more expressive than with the orange contrast. And if you like a brighter styling but yet detest orange, then this combination is also possible here. Come, sports mode, 52. One hundred. So, welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Volkswagen ID3. Finally, we're here and driving that thing. And you can see, of course, the acceleration is stronger when you're starting from zero. But here, already when you are at speed, you can see has some decent performance here from this 204 horsepower engine and rear wheel drive so we really felt that we are getting pushed from the rear old school style and as a contrast program being stuck in traffic i activate here the travel assist optional feature the only disadvantage you know so far base steering wheel animal free Pick the travel assist with the upgrade assistance systems, including the capacitive steering wheel, then this the animal skin, but they're developing an alternative also for the high grade steering wheel, but not yet. Here now, also in the traffic jam then, distance is kept to the car in front of us. I'm not doing anything at the moment. Lane is also being kept in here. See here capacitive steering wheel. Um, of course I don't you know, I'm not supposed to take my hands off the steering wheel just for demonstration purposes here now. We are absolutely safe here at the moment. So here take over steering and just enough when I put a hand here. Just one is enough actually. So I don't need to have like a steering intervention. Capacitive function of steering wheel means it's just enough when I touch the steering wheel. So when I'm for example holding it with one hand all the time, that would also be sufficient. And you see here this um, you know assistant it's working absolutely fine. The autonomous, autonomous emergency brake is standard. Also the lane keeping assist is standard. Just the travel assist that is combining the automatic cru or adaptive cruise control with the active lane keeping assist. That is then an option. And it's of course a helpful feature also for um, motorway driving and, and so on. 
but here you can see also when we are like in this semi traffic so to say um, this is really helpful feature you can relax a little bit more and you know don't have to like you know be super super concentrated all the time so um, so far in this respect happy also with the assistance systems and now on the motorway high speed let's see so now we're about 150 kilometers an hour and it's really very silent in here of course there's some wind noise picking up but I mean considering it's really silent still lifting my foot off the throttle I'm not braking myself, recuperation automatically because the car is intelligent, realizes, although I don't have the adaptive cruise control set, realizes that there's a car in front of it and then the recuperation is done. When I lift my foot of the throttle now, car is just rolling, not recuperating, so it's automatically realizing does it make sense to use the recuperation right now or not. Maximum speed, by the way, 160 kilometers an hour, so I was close to that. Although the adaptive cruise control can be set to 180 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that's maybe a software flaw then. Or maybe is there something else coming up? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> but definitely funny fact for today. So here now a standard motorway speed like 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Also, the car is really very silent. The noise insulation here in this vehicle is, as we also know, for example, from the VW Golf at a very, very high level. So this is something to enjoy together with this wide panoramic windscreen in the front. So there's a great view to the front. It's a very cool traveling feeling. That is really excellent. And you know, acceleration wise is also way more than enough. The car is very agile. Here I can also show you a lane change here, one kilometers an hour. Very crisp and precise steering. There's a standard suspension being built here at the moment, but it's not leaning too much. It's a little sport here, I have to say. Also, we have 20-inch wheels. That can make the ride sometimes a little bit rough. So if you want more comfort, then pick the smaller wheels. But still, decent comfort here in this vehicle, upright seating position. So everything you feel hardware-wise, drivetrain, suspension, later on the DCC, the dynamic chassis control will be available too. This, this will um, give you even more comfort so all the hardware features we feel and so on here again you know small style here at 80 kilometers an hour wow such a precise and great steering feeling so they really have done that very well this is you know everything they could control this is everything they could get from their heritage so they have so much experience in these hardware effects you know from suspension steering feeling you don't have to turn the steering wheel all the way, so it's a very progressive input. So, if you just don't look at the user interface, at everything you put in, if you don't look at the software, maybe it's the best electric vehicle on the market, just hardware-wise, you know, or among the best. But then, at some point you start to, wait a minute, uh, I want to do this and that while driving now. And then you start thinking, how the hell am I going to do that? Um, yeah, and that's then oh, going over here. And that's then where the problem starts. So whereas the hardware is so good, the input, you know, like oh, I need to adjust the mirrors, and then I have to look again. Oh, now I have the right mirror set. And then one to the left. Ah, now I have it again. So distracting, you know, for example, like that. Yeah, so this is where the, where the problem starts then, or then, yeah, like using the temperature sliders, also while driving, also not that good. So, um, yeah, I think that's the problem of this vehicle. Such a great hardware, but especially while driving, not intuitive, not easy to control. This is something they should address. Something can be fixed definitely later on via software or the air upgrades to make it a little bit more simple. Um, but it's not only software, but also the interfaces, as we've already shown you in the interior part. But yeah, definitely a lot to talk about in this vehicle. And I can just stress again, the driving feeling of this vehicle is superb. You know, it, it feels on the one hand small, is compact size. On the other hand, it gets you such a sovereign driving feeling 
blind spot monitor we can see here left side here now there's flashing also when I set the turning indicator here 80 kilometers to 120 there we are that was 150 now to cancel that what a great driving feeling it feels so it's so much fun to drive this vehicle um, again from the hardware and it's really like a little bit I want to close my eyes and don't want to play with the infotainment system and just enjoy the ride, rear-wheel drive concept. And you know, with these electric vehicles, because they're so heavy because of the batteries, it doesn't really matter that much that you don't have, so you don't have the disadvantages of a rear-wheel drive, you know? So you remember maybe um, like past BMWs like 20 years ago in winter times with rear-wheel drive only, you had to put like something heavy in the trunk to get some traction on the ground that won't be necessary here because you can easily go for a rear-wheel drive and don't need an all-wheel drive concept because the car is heavy enough it does give you the grip on the ground that, that you actually you know that you need no problem for that and this is really now so cool about this vehicle turning circle 10.2 meters a turning circle of a VW up and we can easily do a whole driving moderation here on the motorway at higher speeds and you would say like oh there's a noise insulation like you would drive another car in, in the city or so, you know. So again, all these hardware effects, really superb. And some more lower speed driving here once again, see here, don't have to turn the steering wheel that much. Again, a lot of fun in the roundabout. The different driving modes, by the way, in Eco and Comfort, there is hardly any base recuperation, so to speak. In the sports mode, when I lift the throttle, there's more recuperation because sports mode is expecting you go fast, then break again, fast, break again, and so on. Therefore, the recuperation is turned up in the sports mode. Later on, when you have a car with DCC spec, the dynamic chassis control, sports modes will also make the suspension a little bit stiffer. In the eco mode, for example, then the throttle input is further reduced to um, improve the energy economy and talking about that. So including acceleration tests, we are at above 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But again, that's including acceleration tests. So when you really floor it out from time to time, if you leave that, you see also here it drops bit by bit, the more we drive like that. And here you can also see the current consumption. This can be something like 12, 14, 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that's also the you know, normal energy consumption when you keep it rather steady. So then you can indeed score some 14, 15 kilowatt hours and one kilometers. And then when you calculate that with the net capacity of this mid-range battery, then you can indeed reach this, yeah, something 400 kilometers plus range and 250 miles plus range. So that is possible indeed less when you of course use the acceleration pedal a little bit more by the way about the recuperation not only with the driving modes you can also change it here at the driving mode selector at the you know at this column here so when you're in the d mode it rather rolls or recuperates when the car is closer to us in the b mode you press it forward like this go off the throttle then you more have a one pedal driving feeling so indeed you don't use the brake pedal here that often and if you go in the b mode then you you know it's not the most harsh deceleration there's also just one electric motor so with an all-wheel drive recuperation from two electric motors there would be more recuperation you know but but still you know it, it's it's fine here on the b mode not using the brakes just recuperation yeah it's not a real tough one as we know for example from a Tesla or recently experienced in the Polestar 2 but definitely in the B mode stronger recuperation than in the D mode and once again 70 kilometers an hour so like 40 miles an hour how silent it is in here and again good travel feeling the feeling of space you have around you that's again really great so yeah it was hardly ever that a vehicle had so many pros and cons both you know in exterior interior and the driving experience so i mean you have to decide on your own of course but unique yeah
definitely this car is unique. <laughs> and now it's time for our fuel. Uh, fuel? There's no fuel today. Time for our final, <laughs> final conclusion. See you there. And now to our conclusion for today with the Volkswagen ID3. Exterior wise, a very unique design, has this friendly face, so it might remind us really a little bit of the VW Beetle. And can it actually be a you know successor of the Beetle in a way to start this new success story? We have to see about that. Of course, I want to hear your comments if you like this very design right here. It's definitely a very practical design because relation to exterior to the interior space and it's actually quite good so you have a lot of room on the inside you have, you have this van style front windscreen a nice traveling feeling inside the vehicle also on the pro side that this vehicle is almost completely animal free and will be completely animal free in the future even the sports seats then animal free so they really thought about sustainability co2 neutral production as well that starts that in Zwickau where this car is getting built in Germany they use renewable energy then they reduce the CO2 output for example also you know when you go animal free materials that saves a lot of CO2 actually then of course other materials also you know the hardware materials and so on so reduction in the production and then what's left of the CO2 is actually being evened out with forestation so for example there's a big project in Borneo where they then plant trees. So very interesting concept as for that. So good that they are finally on the sustainability approach at Volkswagen. Driving wise, this vehicle is just superb. You know, it's so agile, crisp steering, great performance, nice acceleration. It feels so light and agile, low center of gravity, even out very well it's so much fun to drive this car it drives like a sports car although it does not look like it at all so hardware driving wise from dynamics really great of course a little bit stiff here with the normal suspension and the 20 inch wheels it will be even better soon with the adaptive suspension and a little bit smaller wheels so driving wise great and also good that they built the electric motors themselves so but then you know the crucial point the interior, I mean, on the one hand, good build quality, but then on the other hand, some materials there from the hard pack materials, they need to be upgraded, a little bit more premium feeling for that would be needed. And of course, the software and the control input. So you know there has been a lot of thought about that and they want to create something new, but it's too complicated. It is not intuitive at all. That's, I think, the biggest issue with this vehicle. So we can say... What is the answer of the German automotive industry here from the VW main plant in Wolfsburg? Well, they say hardware-wise, we are still on it. We can still build the best cars as for the hardware, for driving dynamics and so on. And this is so true for this vehicle. It also has the best door closing sound. But software-wise, they are really behind, for example, Tesla. We've see, recently seen the Polestar 2 with the Android integration in the screen. So simple to use and so on. So software-wise, they really need to step up the game. This cannot be the answer from the German automotive industry. Over the air updates are possible. And you see also a paradigm shift here in what they do. You know, like 10 years ago, this would not have happened. So products were pushed to the market when they are absolutely final. Now they need to be faster, they need to push it to the market and then fix things later. With software, at least this is possible. So, very interesting impressions here with the VW ID3 for today. Really a lot to discuss. Join us in the comment section. Also tune in to related videos to this video. Video description, pinned comment. And now, really looking forward to your comments. What do you think of the new Volkswagen ID3? See you there.